What's up everybody, I'm Robin from Foo Events and in this walkthrough video I'm going to show you our new Foo Events event listing block. I'm going to show you how they look and I'm going to show you how to configure the listing block to display your events in different ways. So to get started you can head over to the demo site or you can just watch on screen. If you do go to our demo site go to the calendar views option and you can see the three different layouts over here and the first one is the list option. So this is pretty much default like when you add the block and assume you already have events set up this is what you're gonna see the only difference is it'll inherit some of the styles from your website so for example the title the uh, size of the fonts and the style of the button will inherit directly from your theme so in theory it should just look really good off the bat without you having to do anything um, but again we have really good uh, CSS classes for each item so you can customize it using CSS and you know make it your own uh, it's really easy to do if you have a very basic knowledge of CSS. So, and if you don't, it looks good anyway. If we have a look over here, you'll see we have these date separators. So these, every time the month changes, uh, so when it changes from September to October, a separator is inserted between the events. It just helps by grouping the months by date. Uh, it makes it a bit easier to scan through. And then if we look at an individual event, you'll see it has the featured image, the title, the location, the date and time, an excerpt, the price, if it's a variation, it'll show the price range, and then the availability and book now button. And the cool thing is with the block, you have complete control of which information you'd like to display. So you can disable any of these items if needed. And if we scroll down, we'll see it is a list of events that are displayed on your site. So this is the default list view. We have two other views. The next one we call tiles, which is a grid layout using tiles and uh, the same information is included and the same controls are uh, provided for this so you can disable and enable the information as needed and then last but not least we have the contact version so this actually uses a table but it uses the same class names as your woocommerce tables so it'll inherit the same styling so if your wordpress theme has styling for woocommerce tables which most uh, do these days um, this will be inherited over here and it'll look really good you'll have a very consistent uh, display throughout your site from your order screen checkout to your uh, compact event listing screen and again you can enable and disable which information is displayed here so rather than just show you the front end let's hop into the back end and uh, I'll show you how to configure the block give you a better idea of uh, what exactly is possible and if you'd like to ride along and do the same you can go to the admin demo link over here and that'll spin up a temporary 24-hour demo site with everything already pre-configured and installed and you can play around with the event listing block over there so uh, I've loaded it up let's call this event listing and then to add the block you can either use the add block button or a slightly quicker way is forward slash foo and it'll suggest the block for you so uh, as promised the default option is to display a list of all your events and uh, all the options are for uh, the individual event are enabled which means it's going to show you all the information available for each of these events and then we have the separators of year that will display every time the month changes so there's only one event in january one event in december there's a whole bunch in november so they're all grouped under that separator um, you can also hide this separator if you don't want to view it so Let's, uh, let's have a look at the options and I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a minute too. So the first option is to set the number of events that you want to display. That goes from 1 to 50. So let's max it out. You can then change the order. So this is going to change the order based on the event date. So it's currently descending. Let's change it to ascending. So it's going to show the oldest events first. This also does integrate with our expiration functionality. So if you set events to expire, they won't display here. So if you only want future events to display, make sure you set expiry dates on all your events. And you know, when, they, when the event passes, they won't show over here anymore. Then uh, the next is the event types. So we have single, single day and multi-day events and we have bookable events. So if you only want to show your bookable events in a listing, you can choose it over here. If you want to show all, you can. And then of course, if you only want to show single and multi-day events, you can show them here too. So we'll leave that at all. Uh, next, because these are essentially all WooCommerce products with added event uh, and ticketing functionality, you can use the WooCommerce category filters to filter which events you'd like to include. So if you wanted to 
to only include uh, events from a specific category. Let's say I have one called Featured. And you select that, you enter the slug, it'll suggest the uh, name, you can choose it then. And now these events are all tagged to a WooCommerce category here, WooCommerce category called Featured. So let's uh, remove that for the rest of the demo because I want to show you with as many events set up as possible. And then you can also specify the exact products you'd want to display. So if you only want to display two or three very specific uh, events, you just enter their IDs over here. And if you're not sure to get the IDs really straightforward, you can just go to products. And if you hover over, that's the ID over there. So you just enter the IDs of the ones you want to include. Okay, so that determines what events are going to display in the listing. Let's uh, have a closer look at changing the way they are displayed, so the display settings. And to do that, you expand this option here. So the first option is the layout. We're going to stick with the list view for now. We'll change it to the others later. You can then disable the image if you don't want to use images for this view. And you can choose what size image you'd like to include. So a lot of sites have really small thumbnails, which makes sense, uh, but they can be a little uh, blurry at this size. So yeah, you can rather choose to use the medium size as we have. And then you can choose to left or right align it. So uh, I prefer the left alignment, but you can change it to either. We can then uh, sw switch off or disable, uh, as well as enable, all of the options that you see here. So for example, if you want to remove the separator, that's the monthly separator, just have a listing. And let's say we wanted to hide the location and the excerpt. And you can go through all of these and disable them as needed. Like if you don't like the dash icons, you can simply just disable them there too and of course you can customize the CSS for these by just uh, finding out what the CSS classes are by viewing source when you view this on the front end and adding your own CSS. So let's publish this and have a quick look at what it looks like on the front end. Okay so we got a nice listing of all our events and it displays as configured. So now let's um, change this so i quite like the icons location and the separators adds a little bit of character let's now change it to rather use the grid layout or the tiles layout so by default it's going to use three columns i think four or five would probably look a little bit better so we've got quite a wide area over here so let's leave it at four fits in nicely and um, let's take out the location and let's say the availability. So that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna update, head over to the front end and refresh. And there you go. It's exactly as it looked in the back end. Uh, obviously slightly different uh, button styles. This uses the WordPress button uh, class. So I didn't hear it's from uh, WordPress, whereas this is using the themes button class. So if you uh, if yours doesn't show as a button, that means your uh, theme doesn't have a dot button CSS class and you can fix that simply by creating one dot button and then specify your button styling very straightforward to do um, then let's have lastly let's have a look at the compact version so I quite like this compact version and that it's very easy to scan through your events and uh, from a styling perspective um, it's actually quite a good option. So it's actually, it uses tables, which is a little, uh, it's, not a, it's not a common way to uh, develop front-end uh, content displays. Um, but the reason we did this is because WooCommerce uh, uses tables extensively in the My Account section as well as on the checkout screens. So they have really good styling for tables. And one of the things we try to do with Foo Events is inherit as much as we can from WooCommerce so that if your theme already has styling for WooCommerce, um, it'll just naturally look good when using Foo Events. So you don't have to customize a lot of uh, uh, CSS to make Foo Events look good on your site. It kind of just inherits and naturally looks good so we use the table classes that WooCommerce uses you can see this one as well slightly different and uh, it just means it's 
automatically going to look really neat and clean using those tables and uh, we've also added responsive styling so it, it uh, looks quite nice on mobile as well um, so this is one of my favorites I think it's very easy to scan through especially when the uh, table heading classes have different colors makes it easy to scan through to your different months and uh, I like that it's compact and has all the information in a single row uh, works really well in, in my opinion but uh, which one's favorite for you is, is up to you it depends on what works best for uh, your event um, but yeah they all are solid good options uh, that'll make sure your events are good so if if you uh, if you are new to free events uh, this is just an option for displaying your events uh, by default you can use the built-in WooCommerce shop listing which I'll show you here quickly so this is built in this is there's almost no customization for WooCommerce this is just a standard WooCommerce shop we just have the ability to add the event date over here so you can use this straight off the bat or one of our short codes um, whereas the event listing blocks a new addition just give you a little bit of uh, extra control and this is the first block that we're releasing we're working on a whole bunch of others so our calendar is going to be available in a block format in the not too distant future we can have a, a block for displaying a list of attendees that will be uh, attending an event which is something has been asked for for a lot so we're quite excited to get that out and then of course we'll be adding support for the new WooCommerce uh, cart and checkout blocks which is currently underway as well so lots of blocks to come and you know we love it uh, we think this is a great way to control uh, how events are listed on your site so highly recommend you try it out and of course we'd love your feedback if there are any features you think would work uh, in future phases which will be you know moving forward we'll be adding a whole bunch of uh, additional options to these as well as filtering ability which will be super handy if there's anything you think would add uh, value uh, that will help with your events please head over to our help center hit the contact button and drop a feature request or just get in touch you know on twitter uh, facebook just get in touch and let us know how you use free events and what we can do to make it better for you so thanks for watching and uh, i hope to see blocks on your sites very soon cheers